And it says, by his resurrection, performance. So it's only right that it's Christ because he's excellent, perfect, morally perfect, <laughs> blameless, pure. Ni resurrect pa jud. Performance wise, no problem. Second person of the Trinity, pag yun. So who else but Christ? And then he says, Paul says, through whom we have received grace and apostleship. It is through Christ that, by grace, that he gets his position as an apostle. In the same sense, so when Paul says that we are ambassadors of Christ, it is from Christ that we get this call, this holy, unique, set apart, special, specific call to live for Him. It's not from like, well, ingon magud ang religion na kung dapat inani. So have you ever seen? Um, I don't know, how, but I, I've personally witnessed it once in my life when a guy was actually ordained a priest. You know, but it's it was really strange. Okay the power was conferred to him to be a priest from the cardinal which came from the pope which came from inana and then ang pope kuno magbuot paul says ah, ako ajud you know kung kung pa tasanay na authority mine is from christ himself okay so what is he supposed to do as an apostle kita as ambassadors of christ as as christians who live for the gospel of jesus christ what are we supposed to do What's our primary purpose? Here it is. To bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of His name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To bring about the obedience of faith. It's not an offer of faith. When Jesus preached the gospel, did He say, Please repent, if only? No. He said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. It's a command. It's not an offer. It's not a pleading. Of course, si Paul, he pleads. But his pleading is, there's a command from God, please obey. But from God, it's a command. From us, pleading. we're pleading. Ang uban de baliit. They make it a plea from God, as if God is in heaven going, Oh, please, choose me. And then it's the pastor who now kind of commands, all of you. Balik huh? It's God who commands. And yet for us, because we're not God, we're just ambassadors, we're telling them, please, please submit to the Lordship of Jesus because He's King. And He has a command for all the nations. And so it's a command. So when we preach the gospel, ask yourself, do you preach it as an offer? If you come to Christ, He's going to make you very happy and, and all that. Or is it a command? Dude, you got to repent of your sins. There's going to be a judgment day. There's going to be a reckoning. And I'm not saying this because I'm better than you. I'm saying this because I'm probably worse than you. And I just know what forgiveness feels like. That's the command. That's the plea. And then, his, the question is why? Or for whose sake? For His name's sake. To who? All the nations. And then he says, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Kaning belong, this is the doulos again, the servant again. So, who does it go to? Everyone. Verse 7. So, that's the first half of the sermon pala. Verse 7. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Cunning grace to you and peace. This is actually where John MacArthur gets his website name. Grace to you.org. So anyway, little tidbits of FYI lang. But this whole calling, this is going back to the dulos. The slave, nga na free na, but I want to voluntarily serve him because I love him. So he's saying na God conquered sin for me and then conquered me with his love. Therefore now I voluntarily serve him. And then Paul says, the same, that, the same thing that happened to me ought to be the same thing with you. If you truly love Him, if, you, if God has truly saved you from your sin and conquered you with His love, you ought to feel the same way for Him, same way sa ako. Dulos tang tanan, the Hebrew version of dulos. So there's a proclamation from God. What's the proclamation? That Jesus is the Son of God. And so, we have to command people to 
repent. Now look at Paul's heart now. Now we go to verse 8. So he's, the first part of what he's saying is, his self-introduction is, who, I, uh, who am I and why am I the way I am? So I'm an apostle, I'm a doulos, from God, for God, because of Jesus, and the gospel is something that I have to proclaim. So he's proclaiming it. And the second part is now his heart towards the churches. Now he's saying, here's how I feel towards all of you. Here are my intentions towards everybody. Look at verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. Guys, can the world pass any Rome? Huh? The Roman uh, Empire. Ni siya. It, it doesn't mean like every single part of the entire planet Earth. Okay, Because before, Rome was the known world. So verse 9, For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow, by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So, he wants to go to Rome. And there's a reason why he wants to go to Rome. So, he's saying that, I want to serve you guys. I, wanna, I want us to be mutually encouraged. I want to strengthen you. So, he prays for the church. He's grateful to God for the church. He wants to strengthen the church. And he wants the church to strengthen him. I, I can't explain it. It's a supernatural, spiritual thing. But most of the time, when missionaries go to another place, and that place will say, oh, we're so encouraged by the missionary. The missionaries always have the same experience. Bali man, ako man encourage ninyo. It's always the same. Like, I've been to, what, four mission trips? And the first time, we're, like, we're going there to strengthen the church, to strengthen the church. Pag ato na dito, bali man, kami may na-strengthen. Mura mag, huh? What happened there? You know, especially you go to China where persecution is so grave, and then in the Philippines, Lord, we pray for promotion. Yeah, dito, Lord, we pray makatrabaho na kagi persecute me. And we're like, what? You're going through so much worse, and yet your love for God is so much more on fire than than what I've seen in my own life. Like, how 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 is this possible? So that's what Paul is trying to say. He's saying, I want to strengthen you. I want to encourage you because maybe doctrinally kuang mo, but in terms of passion and zeal and all that, oh my goodness, you're going to encourage me. So what he's saying is, let's, mu let's mutually encourage one another. Let's strengthen one another. So he's praying for all the churches. He thanks God for the churches. He serves the, he serves the gospel by serving the churches. And so he says, By God's will, I may at now at last succeed in coming to you, for I long to see you. Meaning, he's tried so many times to go. Have you guys uh, ever heard of missionaries na um, they say stuff like, bro, please pray for me. Okay, I'm trying to go to this place, but my visa is like this, or there's a problem with my passport, or the finances are like this, you, you know? But you see the effort that they're, they're really trying to go. They go to the embassy, they, they, they beg the embassy, or they're trying to get a, a visa. Same thing with Paul. I guess it's not passports, but other things. Logistics, perhaps. Finances, maybe. We don't know. But there's an effort. So it's not just prayer. It's also effort. It's, it's not just one or the other. It's both. Paul is saying, that's my heart. I, I'm not just praying for you. I'm trying to go there. I'm exerting effort. And then he says, Pagyod, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often tried or intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Can you reap some harvest? What does that mean? A lot of people today, I hear this thought in a very weird, weird way. The reap harvest means I go to the church and I preach, and after I preach, what's next? Honorarium. Honorarium. Diba? Love gift ba? 
love, love gift, you know. After the preaching, thank you. Onya ang pag-shake hands, dahi dala envelope. With some cash inside or a check sometimes. That's how people use this verse, which is very wrong. Why? <laughs> Church became a business, no? And yeah, they say, and then I, I heard some people say to me, Pagid nga, bro, I'm so blessed. Why? Nakarip yud ko harvest from so and so church. Huh? Dako pagid ko na harvest kay check kuno dilit lang cash. Murag, oh my goodness. And then they quote this. This is actually wrong. The Bible calls this, when, when Paul says, reap some harvest, he's talking about new converts. He's talking about, yeah, he's talking about new converts or he's talking about the people living in a more godly way pagyod. Now, when he preaches the gospel, there's even more repentance pagyod. Okay? And then he says, I'm under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians. Guys, remember, ha? obligation, again, doulos. I am called doulos. I am a servant, doulos. This doulos is voluntary, loving service. Yes. So, can in Greeks and to barbarians, you know why it's called barbarians? Okay. Yeah. Uncivilized. Uncivilized. But you know why it, the word used is barbarians? <laughs> because their language sounds a lot like barbar. Bar. You know how, yeah, like that. You know how in Chinese, the Cantonese, for example, is very, oh, 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 yeah, I guess. So, barbarians, they talk that way. That's why they're called barbarians. Because bar, they, the, lots of words have the syllable bar in it. Okay, now, here's the weird part. Because of that, the barbarians were considered to be stupid, idiotic, or foolish. And the Greeks were considered to be sophisticated and smart and all that. And Paul is saying, I'm under obligation to teach both. And for me, I found that very weird. Why? Dude, if you're Paul, you've got theological, doctrinal, high-mindedness. And then you teach barbarians. Di ba murag sayang imong gitunan? It's kind of like you have a PhD in, you know, a master's in theology, in divinity, in PhD, and ABC, and all those other titles. And then all that, ano, and you know so many things about predestination, election, and all that. You know, and then you teach sa slums where they don't really understand any of that. Kung ako to, I would tell Paul, dude, you're wasting your talents. You should go to the academics, you know? You should, you should, you know, teach in the seminaries. Ana, you know? That's my sinful, fallen, fleshly mind. Paul says, I don't care about my intellectual, you know, from Gamaliel, Hebrew of Hebrews, Pharisee. No, I'm going to the barbarians as well. Those who don't really know much. I don't care about sayang sayang there's no sayang what if the harvest is reaped if people get saved get born again pites na okay na and look at verse 15 so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome don't you find this weird he's preaching the gospel to a church a lot of times we think that the gospel should be preached to the non-church and then when you go to church you preach something else that's not the gospel yeah, that's the impression. But Paul says, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Guys, remember this. The gospel is not the entrance to Christianity. And then after that, you go to more gospel is grade one. And then maybe Christology is mga high school level. You know, and then the sovereignty of God is siguro college. That, that's not true. Here's the truth. The gospel is PhD. Okay? The gospel is everything. In fact, uh, I forgot which verse in the Bible says this, but it says nga, even angels long to look into these things. And these things are the gospel itself. Now, angels don't understand. Think about it. Angels, they see the Lord. They see Jesus Christ. All His fullness, all His glory. And the angels are going, wow, amazing si God. And then the angels look at man. Oh my gosh, ka sinners aninila. God, you want us to destroy them now? And then God says, no, 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 I'm going to go there myself. And the angels are going, ooh, personal destruction. Oh, we, we, I really want to see this. And then Jesus comes down and they're going to say, okay, here we go. Human race going to get obliterated by our God. 
and then Jesus dies on the cross for them. If I were an angel, I'd be like, what? <laughs> I mean, this doesn't make I did sense. Not see that coming. <laughs> right? And so the yeah. gospel is for a it, it doesn't matter it doesn't make sense. The greatest dilemma in all the universe, according to well, this is Paul Washer, but um, he takes it from Proverbs, says that the the just judge has no reason to acquit the guilty. And so he's saying the biggest problem in all the universe is not that, you know, there's hell and how could God be just if, if he sends a person to hell for all eternity? That's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is how could God save sinners that deserve nothing but hell? Okay? In fact, you know what? Let's, I know, let's um, discuss this a little bit more. Justice True justice is when you get every single bit of what you deserve. Do you agree with the phrase, every single bit? Okay. Now, if you agree with that, it means when a person is not yet a Christian, he should be in hell now. Not judgment day. Now. There should not be oxygen. There should not be sunlight. There should not be enough for him. There should not be any kind of good thing that he experiences at all. Not even a slice of bacon or, uh, you know, watching a really good movie or seeing the cuteness of a puppy or to experience the beauty of a flower. No, like none of those things. No good thing. True justice means the moment a person is born, pag panganak yun, panganak help. That is what we all deserve. That's justice. The fact that God is delaying, that's already grace. Mm. And people will say, oh, I know he's delaying it, Raman, but it's still unfair. But the fact that you're experiencing breath right now, that God has given you the freedom to speak against him, yeah. that's not fair. That's Amen. not just. <laughs> yes, there you go. First Peter 1 Peter 1.12. So it's, it's very, it's very mind-boggling. So he's saying, I'm eager to preach the gospel to you who are also in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Can you bitong when Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel? Bigat kayo ni? Because it's Paul saying it, not anyone else. Let me give you some of Paul's credentials. Paul was imprisoned in Philippi chased out of Thessalonica, smuggled out of Berea, laughed at in Athens, called a fool and regarded as stupid in Corinth, and stoned in Galatia. And then later on, murdered and, you know, for the gospel. So when he says, I'm not ashamed, we know he's not ashamed. Mm -hmm. He can prove it with battle scars and everything else. And so he's saying that the, the, he's not ashamed because it's the power of God for salvation. This power, the Greek word for this is dunamis, where you get the word dynamite. And so explosive power. So this is God's explosive power to save people. So the gospel is not some weak thing. And a lot of times I feel like the gospel, when the gospel is preached, people are so afraid to preach it. They don't feel like the gospel has power. So what do they do? They start manipulating the gospel presentation with good music and you know, dim the lights and everyone, please close your eyes and make sure that, you know, all heads are bowed. Para lang, you know, people won't feel ashamed. People won't be be um, shy if they want to raise their hands. They won't feel na marag maulaw sila, you know? And then I witnessed another guy do it this way and I copied it ever, sen- ever since. Egon siya, here's what he said. Everyone says that uh, as I preach the gospel, everyone should have their eyes closed and their heads bowed. Right now, I want to do something different. All of you, stay seated. If you want to repent, come to Christ, stand up. And everybody, keep your eyes open. Okay? Declare it to the world. If you follow Christ, you follow Christ publicly, not privately. Don't give the impression or message nga gapi yung tanan, gabaw tanan heads. That's when you follow Christ. So no one knows you're a Christian because it's a private thing. It's not Christianity. And so Paul is saying, I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel. Meaning, if you follow the gospel, don't be ashamed. Also, it's the power of God to save. 
And there's more reason for Paul to be ashamed because, first of all, under Gamaliel, 